Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I am joined this evening by Sarek, one of our Royals at the Ranch. This is Royals at the Ranch for Thursday, December 9th, 2021. In this episode, you're going to get to meet some animals and see some animal updates. We're going to, of course, start with Sarek because he is by far the most outgoing Python Regis that we have here at Behavior Education. He's very active and I would say that he's probably a little bit of an outlier for his species. Sarek was hatched on June 11th, 2021. I got him from CMM Constrictors and he arrived here at just three and a half weeks old. And he is part of a behavior program where I am starting very, very, very young Python Regis with lots of environmental stimulation, with training from their first feeding, and with very, very environmentally complex habitats right from the get-go. And I'm seeing how they respond to that. And Sarek has responded extremely well. If you want a very well-adjusted Python Regis, Royal Python as a family pet, who is going to be awake at times other than just the middle of the night, who is going to be visible a lot of the time, who isn't going to hide very often, who is going to tolerate a lot of interaction from people, who is curious and outgoing and bold for his species. I see him more than any of our Python Regis. He is just comfortable and relaxed with our home, with me, with the activities here. And in fact, it's very difficult to keep him contained within his habitat because if he is awake, he wants out. If he's not resting, if he's not in an ecdesis cycle, if he's not asleep, when he's awake, he wants out of his enclosure and he's awake far more than many of our other Python Regis. So, I know so. that you've seen Sarek in other videos and he's been here five months now. I'm just really, really pleased with him. I also am very partial to dark colored animals. I like black animals and brown animals. And I think that his color is just gorgeous. And he and. is a blackhead leopard black pastel. But as far as my little experiment goes, in regard to getting them extremely young, exposing them to a lot of environmental complexity, cognitive stimulation, and training from the beginning, he's just responded in an outstanding way to all of that and done very, very, very well. Animal number two is one that you have also seen before. This is Aminette. She is one of the first two Python Regis that I added to our behavior and training program here. And Aminette was hatched on September 12th, 2019 and arrived here March 24th, 2020. So she was six months old when she arrived here and her beginnings here were very different than Sarek's. She was started out very hands off she started out in a tub similar to the one she was at at her breeders. And that didn't last very long. If you followed the beginning episodes of her story and a moon story, you know that that was part of the experiment I was running to see if they seemed to have a preference when given the choice between a tub and an environmentally complex habitat, which both of them ultimately chose to spend all of their time in the habitat and not in the tub but I didn't want to influence that at all. So she spent her first couple, two or three days in a tub similar to the one at her breeders. She was exhibiting so many stereotypies and so much fear, anxiety, and distress in that situation that I put her in a larger tub that had a clear front with just a slightly more environmental stimulation and she immediately turned around in her behavior. The stereotypies stopped and she was comfortable and relaxed in that setting. And then after a few more weeks, I gave her the choice by putting the tub inside the habitat of her being in the tub or being in the habitat. And it, as it turned out, she spent all her time in the habitat at large and she used her tub to use the bathroom and she used it as a toilet area and she would also shed in there. But otherwise she used the hides and the heat and the water and the climbing stuff and the little fake plants and everything in her pseudo naturalistic habitat versus the tub. 
but her beginnings were very different than Sarek's, where with Sarek, I have deliberately from day one exposed him to choice-based handling, to stimulation, to complexity in a very hands-on and active manner. I've done a lot of active habituation with him, and I allowed Aminette to passively habituate to activities here. In other words, I set her up into an environment where she had lots of choices, and I just let her be, and I made observations in a journal as to what choices she made. So I was not doing any kind of deliberate handling. I was doing target training during her feeds, but it was just as a signal that she was going to eat. I wasn't asking her to do any behaviors, follow the target or shift or anything like that. The target for her was just as a signal that she was going to eat. So receiving her food reinforcer wasn't contingent on any other behavior. And now we're in 2021 and she is just over two years old and she does have a much, much different personality than Sarek. She has just in the last three weeks started wanting out of her enclosure more and that's something that's new. Rarely has she asked to come out of her enclosure. She is often visible in the middle of the night but she doesn't always come to the door and want out. She'll come to the door a lot and look out and sit there. And if I open the door, she'll often sit at the threshold and look out and tongue flick. But rarely has she ever come out. Maybe once every other month or something, she would come out and explore around the room. But now the last two or three weeks, she has been asking to come out very frequently. And when I say very frequently, I mean several times a week. And she asked to come out tonight. Just now when I went to check on her, she was actually out of her enclosure in the room on the floor climbing around and I was able to pick her up and bring her in here. If I take her back into her room and I set her down, it will only take her a few seconds to start exploring that room and crawling around because after two years, she's very, very familiar with it and she is comfortable and relaxed in there. So here are two of our Python Regis for you. Here is Sarek, who's only about six months old and was three and a half weeks old when he got here, exposed to a ton of cognitive stimulation and environmentally um, complex situations from day one on his arrival here. And here is Aminette, who is just over two years old. She arrived here at six months old and she had been living in a rack um, with just a water dish and I think that was it, just in a, in a rack with a water dish and paper for substrate. And then I started her very hands off. I just set her up in situations with choices and I monitored her behavior and journaled her behavior. So I wasn't actively trying to habituate her to anything. I just gave her tons and tons of choices and opportunities and I observed what she chose to do. And so now we're a couple of years later and here she is, she's very beautiful. She is becoming more outgoing now that that experiment's over and I am allowing her pretty much to come out whenever she wants and I'm now starting to habituate her to more handling and more activities and I'm asking her to target now in other places other than just to feed her in her enclosure. So I'm asking her to target out of her enclosure and then on those occasions when she's come out on her own, I'm doing a target training session when she's out and feeding her when she's outside of her enclosure. And that actually ultimately encourages them to come out more because they know that they can leave their habitat and go search for food and oftentimes get the desired reward, which is to find a meal. And she's a, I think, just a normal piebald. I mean, she is a piebald royal, obviously, but I don't know what her other genetics are. I think it's just normal piebald. Very pretty. This is my mom's favorite snake that we have because she loves, loves, loves the way that she looks. <laughs> okay, so I've come into one of our snake rooms and I've put Aminette, I didn't put her here actually, I just held her near this activity tree which she has been on before and she chose to climb onto the activity tree. So she is on the second level down from the top of the activity station. And as I said, she is familiar with this since she's been more active the last three weeks and wanted to come out. She's been on this station a few times and she has done a target training exercise and eaten on this station exercise. twice. Now, Sarek, 
I gave him the same opportunity to climb onto the station and he chose to stay on my hand. Sarek oftentimes chooses to just hang out with me and I'm under no disillusion that he loves me or that he just thinks I'm the most wonderful companion in the world. As I said, he was only three and a half weeks old when he got here and I started active habituation to training, to environmental enrichment and to handling from day one, not flooding him. I still did all that choice based, but he was so young, he hardly knew anything else. And now he's so familiar with me, with my scent, with my body feel, with my body temperature, with everything about me, that I'm sure he views me as something familiar, as something he knows is safe. And I'm a human being, you know, I'm about five, six, and I'm something that is safe and comfortable for him to climb around on. And so oftentimes, even if he's loose and I'm sitting somewhere working, he will come over to me and he'll just start climbing on me. He'll climb on my arms and legs. He'll climb on my head. He'll climb on my eyeglasses. He just uses me as an activity station. And so when I brought him in here and offered to put him onto the activity station, you know, he wasn't interested. He climbed um, towards my face instead of climbing to the activity station. And then down here, several levels down, we have a snake that I think you've been introduced to just in photographs or maybe some videos of her in or near her enclosure. There is an activity area next to her enclosure. That's one of those leafy trees we have. But this is Romana, um, very similar in appearance to Sarek. She's a blackhead, black pastel. She came from Chris Dobbs reptiles. She's actually fairly outgoing too. She voluntarily comes out of her enclosure quite a bit. However, she is less used to handling, although it's not a problem to handle her once she's out. I, I of course, do choice-based handling, so I'm not going into her enclosure and grabbing her out. She's doing very well with target training, and she does come out of her enclosure several times a week, and she climbs around the activity area that's adjacent to her enclosure. And if she goes to an off-limits area and I have to pick her up, it's no problem for me to pick her up and she doesn't ball up or freak out or anything. She's fairly good about that. But again, I got her very young. Let's go. That was Romana's first time out of her room and to be on that particular activity station. And she was on there for 15 or 20 minutes. And I think that's enough time for her first time. This is the activity area that she's used to because it's right next to her enclosure. And right now she's in a 20 gallon top opening enclosure. And that has been no problem whatsoever for choice-based handling or target training or anything of that nature. And she does not want to go back. You do not want to go back. Okay. She doesn't want to go back. And as you can see, Sarek didn't want to use any activity areas. He is climbing on me. Romana was hatched on July 7th, 2021 at Chris Dobbs Reptiles. And she arrived here at just 10 weeks old. You're looking at two snakes here who arrived under three months old versus Aminette, who was a little over six months old when she arrived here. Just like with Sarek, as soon as Romana arrived here, she was put into an environment with cognitive complexity, started training with her first feed, lots of environmental enrichment opportunities outside of her habitat if she chooses, I started actively habituating her right away to 
choice-based handling. She was about 10 weeks old when she arrived here and I took an active role without flooding her to getting her used to life with a family. And as you can see with her behavior, she's doing very, very well. There are several possibilities going on here. Of course, all sorts of things play a role in your snake's ultimate temperament and personality. Some of it is the innate temperament they were born with, which is gonna be due to genetics, epigenetics, how their parents were. And then some of it is gonna be due to the environment that they were in prior to arriving with your family. And then part of it honestly is gonna be how old were they when they arrived with your family? How much time did they spend in the old environment versus how much time have they been with you? And I was lucky enough to get a group to study behavior with that were all under 11 weeks old. And I started them immediately with choice-based handling, active habituation to touch and handling, target training, lots of environmental complexity, mental stimulation, just to see how they would respond. And they've all responded fantastically if you want a snake that is fairly interactive and a great family member and doesn't hide as much as the typical royal. And when I say the typical royal, the ones that I had interacted with prior to these, I had gotten when they were much older. So six months old, Aminette was, and then I kind of left her alone to settle in and I was doing some other behavior observations with her. She's just not as outgoing as these guys. Is it because of her genetics? Is it because of her innate temperament? Is it because of um, things she was exposed to in her first six months? Is it because I didn't expose her to all of the things I've exposed these guys to? I just don't know, I can't answer that question. But what I can tell you is with the Royal Pythons, I'm noticing a huge disparity in individual personalities. So I have a group of 12. So if I took a dozen of my Morelia Bradley or a dozen of any Morelia Bradley, I could tell you with 99% certainty Here's a list of behavior traits, temperament characteristics, things that you can expect from them, and here's how I, I think they're likely to react under all of these circumstances. But I haven't been able so far to make those same lists for Python Regis because of the 12 we have. They're so disparate in their individual personalities. Some are very, very shy, and I literally never see them unless they poke their head out of their hide to eat and that's the middle of the night and then some like Sarek is extremely outgoing and then I have some in the middle that while I can tell you some general characteristics for Python Regis like compared to other pythons they're likely to be more shy less active more strictly awake in the evening or at night I can't tell you specific personality traits for individual Python Regis until I ask you questions and get to know your individual animal. So, because if I'm comparing Python Regis to Brettles pythons or carpet pythons or children's pythons, I can tell you Python Regis are gonna be more shy. They're gonna be more likely to only be awake in the evening or the middle of the night. That's when they come out and are visible. They're gonna be less active they're gonna be less amenable to handling and interacting with you, et cetera, et cetera. But now if you ask me to compare 12 different Python Regis to each other, I can't do that off the top of my head without assessing each individual animal because I'm seeing so many different personality differences between animals in that same species. Hi everyone, I have to interject here and tell you that as I was editing this episode, I realized it was getting really long and I actually took a lot of Python Regis out tonight for you to see and I interacted with them a lot and I also got some footage of them just free roaming and doing some interactions like that. So we will have to do a part two. If you liked this episode and you want me to show the rest of the snakes that I took out tonight, next week, or in a future week, just comment. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up, but I'll save all that footage. You will get to meet the other snakes and see the other snakes. But if I put that all in this video, it would be about an hour long, and that's just becoming excessive. I appreciate all of you who have stayed with me this long. Until next time, 
Everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you tuning in every week for Royals at the Ranch. Let me know if there's anything in particular that you're interested in seeing more of. This week's episode, I realized, was a little bit different. We didn't have a special segment. We didn't have a Royals in your homes. You got to see Royals in my home because this just went kind of long because I had so many tonight that decided they wanted to be active and come out and roam around. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.